Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. welcome back to my channel. Everyone knows that no two snowflakes are the same, but is it possible to have two galaxies that are exactly the same? This video will delve into the fascinating world of galaxy types, so let's begin. Galaxies are large collections of stars, gas and dust, held together by their gravity. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is a spiral galaxy. It has a central bulge, a disk of stars, and defined spiral arms. Our closest major galactic neighbor, Andromeda, is also a spiral galaxy, and it's often called the Milky Way's twin because it has a very similar size, shape, and composition to our own galaxy. But there are some very important differences. So Andromeda is about twice as big as the Milky Way, and it has a much larger black hole at its center. In 1926, Edwin Hubble developed the Hubble Tuning Fork, a classification scheme to sort different types of galaxies according to their shapes. This diagram would essentially split galaxies into two main types, elliptical galaxies and spiral galaxies. So the elliptical galaxies are located on the left hand side of the diagram and these are represented by a series of ovals ranging from E0 to E7 with E0 being nearly circular galaxies and E7 being highly elongated galaxies. Elliptical galaxies are characterized by their lack of structure and more uniform distribution of stars. The right hand branch of the diagram represents the spiral galaxies. So this branch is further then divided into two subcategories, normal spirals and barred spirals. Normal spirals have a central bulge and two or more spiral arms and it's characterized by the number of arms that extend outwards. While barred spirals have a central bar shaped structure with spiral arms extending from the ends classified according to how loose these spiral arms are. This means that galaxies on the left hand side of the diagram, so E0, were known as early type galaxies because originally they were thought to be the um, very young galaxies that eventually evolved along the tuning fork into the spirals and the barred spiral galaxies. Um, but nowadays we know it's the other way around. Spiral galaxies tend to be young and star forming, whereas ellipticals are actually red and dead, so they're filled with old red stars. These days, this view of galaxy evolution as this tuning fork is very outdated. It's now believed that galaxies do not evolve in a linear fashion, and there's no single path to galaxy evolution. Instead, galaxies evolve in a variety of ways depending on their environment and their history. Also, although the Hubble Tuning Fork Diagram provides a useful way to classify most galaxies, some galaxies just do not fit into this system. Irregular galaxies, for instance, have unusual shapes and lack of symmetry of spiral and elliptical galaxies. Dwarf galaxies, on the other hand, are very small and often have low luminosities, making them very difficult to classify anyway. Additionally, we have giant elliptical galaxies. These are located at the centers of galaxy clusters and are much larger than typical elliptical galaxies in the diagram, and they require a completely separate category. Over time, Hubble's tuning fork has been extended to incorporate more of these exceptions, and it remains a valuable tool for organizing galaxies based on their visual appearance. This allows astronomers then to better understand the nature of galaxies and their evolution. But it has become clear that galaxy evolution is a more complex process than initially thought. The linear path shown in the diagram is an oversimplification of the full range of galaxy types and evolutionary paths. Galaxy evolution is influenced by a multitude of factors, including the initial conditions of a galaxy's formation, interactions, and even mergers with other galaxies. Even things such as internal processes, such as star formation and feedback from active galactic nuclei. For this reason, just like snowflakes, the likelihood of two galaxies being identical is virtually zero. In 2013, astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope uncovered what appears to be a pair of identical galaxies. 
and they look so weird. It took them several years, actually until 2021, just to determine that they actually are. It turned out that these galaxies were in fact stretched images of a third gravitationally lens distant galaxy, located more than 11 billion light years away. The foreground galaxy cluster had so much gravity that it was able to magnify and distort the light from the distant galaxy behind it, creating these multiple images. So false alarm, not identical galaxies. In practice, no two galaxies should be exactly the same because each galaxy is shaped by a unique set of physical conditions and evolutionary history. Galaxies are formed by the collapse of massive clouds of gas and dust, and their structure and properties are shaped by a variety of factors. These include the initial density and distribution of matter, the presence of dark matter, and the effects of nearby objects such as other galaxies, stars, and black holes. The formation and evolution of galaxies is a complex process that involves a wide range of physical phenomena including gravitational collapse, gas accretion, star formation, supernova explosions, and feedback from supermassive black holes. These processes can vary from one galaxy to the next, leading to a tremendous diversity of galaxy shapes, sizes, and properties. Even galaxies that appear pretty similar in terms of their overall shape or color can have significant differences when studied in detail. For example, two galaxies may have the same overall shape, but differ in the distribution of their properties, their stars, gas, and dust, or they might have similar colors, but they differ in their spectral lines, which will reveal information about their chemical composition and star forming history. And remember, when you do find two galaxies that are identical, chances are it's an illusion caused by gravitational lensing. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.